So today's message, like Tim said, it's a little bit of testimony. It's a little bit of what he's worked in my life and what I've seen work in Sparta and Chicago and all these things. And then it came to be like this whole this whole summit then <laughs> that I wasn't expecting. And um, so if I shared everything from Sparta and Chicago, we would probably be here until midnight. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but I just want to go over things that God really laid on my heart to share. And I didn't know my crazy Jesus friends was going to be here. <laughs> or I would have had them share some of the things that I'm sharing with you. Um, so um, I believe with, like, with all my heart that today is going to break the chains, break the barriers of traditional church. And I have to tell you, I'm a little nervous because this is a tough message to hear. It's kind of like if you've ever watched Hoarders and they're like, no, I don't have a problem, you know, and you go through their house and they have like this little bitty place to sleep. And it's like, yes, yes, you do have a problem, <laughs> you know, um, but but so like um, this is really tough for me. And, and so he's, Jesus has been really working it on me as well. And I'm like, man, this is this is tough. But then Pastor Tim was like, you know, sometimes you just have to, you know, give it like Jesus did. You know, he did it, um, you know wishy-wash it he just told you 100 percent the truth mm. so here Amen. we go <laughs> um and so what i've been seeing is that not only is this church going to have the barriers broken but i believe without a doubt and i've been seeing i follow a few prophets that i listen to that it's across the board that all churches are going to get this. And so I'm believing right now that the people that God put in all churches of America, that they're hearing this. And I know they have because I wrote this, um, well, God wrote this. I was just being his servant. And then I listened to a prophet and it was like basically saying the same thing. I'm like, whoa. Um, so uh, he's going, he's going to, this is going to be, um, like an atomic bomb. It's going to go all over the place. It's going to be so contagious. Not not COVID contagious, but so contagious yeah. that nobody is going to be able to stop it. Not even Satan. And so I hear God saying, get out of the four walls. And we've heard that before, and I'm pretty sure I've said that before up here. But getting out of the four walls, okay? It is okay. Just like I said, you're not chained to the chair. You are it's okay to get out of your comfort zone. God wants you to get out of that comfort zone, and he wants you to go and, um, and, and just fellowship with other people. You never know what they need from you or vice versa Amen. you need from them. Amen. And so when God was um, telling me all this stuff, I'll try to say this, um, but there's things in here where he's like, bold that. So I'm going to try to do that. So the first thing is, in bold, it's time to break the barriers of traditional church. And that should be something we should be rejoicing in, that we should be happy because Jesus is looking down and he's like, I've had enough. I had enough. I'm done. It's time to break those traditional churches. And, and it's in reality, we have to give him that permission. He's knocking. He's ready for you to open up the door. Yeah. We just have to give him permission. Yeah. Um, so, um, so Satan has had the church so conditioned, you know, that he, when this pandemic hit, he really thought that he had it in the bag, you know. And, and Jesus is like, no, that's that's enough. I, I'm done watching this. And so this is in bold. And he says, I've had enough. And I'm going to awaken my people. Amen. That is powerful right yeah. there. Yeah. He's going to awaken his people. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we've seen was all of a sudden all these little groups started started up. And then like they're posting it on Facebook. And then like people was like engaging in them. And then at one point in time when COVID was really bad, you know, Jesus was one of the first things in the search bar because just everybody was trying to figure out what the heck was going on. Yeah. 
And so um, Jesus raised up a small remnant of people who trusted the Lord more than the government, more than the lives that Satan was skewing. And so um, Jesus said um, that he has already been doing this. And I believe today he's going to do this. That he's taking the shackles off. That he is taking the scales off. That he's going to take off the mouthpiece that Satan has put on your mouth. And he is going to make you come out like a mighty lion. So I stole this from my friend Jay. Uh, um, this next part. Uh, but then God added in with it. So I want you to look at your neighbor and say, wakey, wakey. Wakey, wakey. Do it. Do it. Wakey, wakey. All right. He's saying, wakey, wakey. Wakey, wakey. Wakey, wakey, sleepy sheepy. It's time to awaken and arise, almighty children of God. of God is all in capitalized letters. And so after a rise, God says, I want you to put come to light, which explains the picture up there. Awaken and arise, O mighty children of God. I have to tell you, there was a point in my life where the world made me feel this small. Where everything just kept happening. It was like, the more I tried to push into God, the more Satan was trying to attack. And so I felt this small. And right here, I, I like just want to rejoice in that because he's saying, you're not small. Stop believing that. Amen. You are worthy. You are mighty. And you are a mighty child of God. And somebody needs to receive that today. <laughs> um, so, so I'm going to break down the two things. This is actually... Um, piggybacked or um, a building block off of a word that I had a year ago on rise up. And so I thought that word came to pass, but as me and Pastor Tim was talking, I really believe that it's a building block from that. So when he told me we're going to talk about two choices, he uh, put in my um, head like a, a T-chart. And so on the left was a yes, and on the right was a no. Um, so I'm going to give a few examples of yeses and no's. I'm going to go personally with myself, but let me tell you, it's hard sometimes to be like, yeah, I've had problems too. Uh, but again, that quarter person, you have to really believe like, yeah, I have problems, you know, but God is working on me. God is right. fixing me. Right. Right. And so... After Jay and his team um, came to St. Elmo a year ago, I seen them dancing and rejoicing like I've never seen anybody do it before. And I'm like, whoa, I want that. You know, not that I wanted to compare myself to Jay or to Gabe or to Chuck or any of those amazing people over there, but I wanted what they had, which was freedom. And I didn't really know that. You know, everybody says, oh, get baptized, go to church. And then they leave it like that. Whoa. And so after they came, I was really set on fire. I'm like, yes. And so actually, like, the day they left, I'm like, oh, high and mighty on God. And, you know, woo! And I go to County Market in Vandalia, and I'm like, hey, Jesus loves you. Can I pray for you? And she's like... How was church? And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and she didn't want she didn't want prayer or anything like that. So I'm like, okay, and I'm just praying, you know, and I'm like, you know, if she's still out there, I'm gonna go back out there and do it again. <laughs> but she wasn't. But anyway, so Satan was seeing what God was doing, and he's starting to get scared. Because that's just another person that finally found their voice. Because God has given all of us, no matter what age, no matter how young or old, no matter what you have done in the past, he has given us all the authority to, you know, to just go out there 
and be those mighty children. And so I got hurt. I got really hurt. And it really hurt my heart. And so it, it came to the point that I was still saying yes to things, but then I was saying no. And so I would come up here, but I wasn't fully on fire like I was because Satan had attacked. He twisted the lies. He told me I wasn't good enough. He told me I wasn't qualified enough. He told me that, you know, I just am not fit for this job. So much so that he said, Jesus gave you the wrong, the wrong gifts. And so that really hurt. And so I had to deal with that. And so I don't know what it was or what I seen or whatever, but I finally got my fire back. And I want to tell you, even if you say no, God is still always there. He's still, he never leaves or forsakes you. He still is there. And I just, I'm so happy and glad that with his love and mercy, even though my no started to become more, and I was seeing all the things that was going on, he actually was pulling me away a little bit to kind of look at the bigger picture. And, um, but, so I started to get more fire and stuff. And, um, so, I don't know where I was going with that, but, um, so anyway, um, I was dealing with that and um, starting to get my fire a little bit more. And um, anyway, so God just really laid it on my heart to get a hold of Jay because when I was really on fire, um, he's like, you're gonna be preaching. I didn't know what that preaching was or how that would look like, but he said, you're gonna be preaching. And so that kind of like came back into my mind and he's like, you need to get a hold of Jay. And I'm like, okay. So I texted him like, hey, like, where's your next meeting? And he's like, hey, we're actually going to Sparta next week. You know, just let me know, you know, whatever you want to do in the two weeks or whatever it was. And anyway, so um, I went to go put my phone down. And let me tell you, God can tell you no sometimes too. And I hope we have a friend that had this amazing opportunity and so she was going with it, and then God was like, no, I'm closing that door. And so sometimes God closes doors. We might not know the reason, but we need to trust in him. And so, so sometimes he tells us no as well. And so that's what he did to me. He said, no, you're going to make this commitment right now. And I'm like, okay. And uh, he's like, you're going to tell him right now, because what has happened is I've actually reached out to him a couple of other times. They're like, hey, I want to go. And then I never do. Because then Satan attacks or, or I have this to do or that to do. And he's like, no, you're making a commitment. So I go to Sparta and I remember the first night. And the first night I had two things that really stood out to me. One was Jay loves to pray with people. And so he's like, Hey, can I pray for you? And I'm like, yeah. And as he was praying, this one thing stuck out into my mind. And that was um, that Sparta was going to be the opening doors to what's going to be happening in the future. And so I didn't know how that was going to play out. Um, but I received that and, and held on to that. The second thing was he was up here talking and he's like, hey, like, if anyone wants a flag, I'm inviting you, come up and get a flag. And then he was like, you know, this sets people free. Like, I've seen people be set free. And I'm like, yeah, I like that. But I, again, Satan was like, you're uncoordinated. <laughs> you're going to hit a ceiling fan or you're going to hit a light <laughs> or a person. <laughs> and... And so I finally had that urge to go. And I'm telling you right now, if, if God is whispering to you and, and, um, or talking to you, or if he's really been laying it on hard, you really just need to go with it. Because I'm telling you, if I did not pick up that flag, that was the road to that open doors to set me free. Amen. Yeah. Hey. 
And wow. so um, then we went, we went to um, just evangelize, and there was a guy that was like, yeah, I know I need to be saved, and uh, my family's in the ministry, but you could tell he was really hurt. You could tell maybe like a church hurt, uh, maybe family disappointment. And when he was talking, it sounded like he kind of jumped through all these hoops to be right with the Lord. And so we kind of pushed a little bit, but we, you know, God gives us the choice. He gives us the yes or the no. And, you know, we make that choice. And just like Adam and Eve. And so um, he just, he wasn't there yet. And I believe he planted his seed that day. Um, he, he just wasn't there yet. And so his his answer was no, but I believe that God is going to redeem him from that and that he's going to repent from that and he's going to say yes. And then it's going to be just a crazy, holy <laughs> ride after that. Um, so as we were talking to somebody else, so I gave you two no's, I'm going to give you a yes now. And this lady that Jay and a couple other people were ministering to, you know, Jay was talking to them for a really long time, and Jay was actually getting ready to walk away, and he felt pushed to push a little harder, and when he did, she said yes. So all of a sudden, all I remember is we're taking out the baptismal tank, we're filling up the water, we're in the deep part of Sparta. And so, like, we're doing all these things, and we're baptizing her right in front of her house because she said yes. She didn't care if she was in church or whatever. She was just like, yes, yes, and we're doing it right now, you know. And, and that was so beautiful. I remember her smiling so much that at one point in time, she's like, my cheeks hurt so, so badly because my, I keep smiling. And um, so we're going to dig down into the yeses and the noes. And there's more than just this, but this is only what God has, so that's what we're going with. So yes means life or light, all right? It also means peace, joy, eternal life, love, and the big one was prosperity. What does no mean? No means darkness, death, fear, confusion, manipulation, and here's a big one where I was like, whoa, after I wrote this. Deteriorating thoughts, feelings, and health. That was, that was, I don't know if that's for somebody today, but know that if you've been saying no, that God is waiting for you to say yes, and then let him do the rest, you know? And then you have all these amazing people that are here cheering you on. Um, so, what does being a traditional church like, look like? Traditional church looks like, okay, I said yes today for Sunday. I come in and I go sit down and wait for church to start. I want to let you know that church starts way before 10 o'clock or whatever time church starts in other places. Church starts with your yes, and then maybe even in your car, already preparing your hearts, preparing the hearts of your sisters and brothers. And then when you come in here, it starts by when you start talking to people, there's that uh, word about the, you know, I'm pouring into you, you pouring into me thing. And so it starts way before 10 o'clock. And so we've gotten in such a routine because of daily life that now it's been sucked in into our church where ultimately that is where the church has gone wrong and been silenced. And so we really need to grasp, it, grasp this that, you know, church doesn't have to be on Sunday. Church lives inside of you. You can have church in your home. You can have church on the street. You can have church in a van. You can have church. You can have church wherever, in a forest. You know, wherever it is, you can have church. All right? It doesn't have to be in these four walls. It can go everywhere. 
And so, how do we give God permission? For one, it's saying yes. And so, that yes means, okay, I got baptized, there's my yes for the rest of my life. And that's not how it goes. Amen. Yes is an everyday thing. Yes is a every decision making, every conversation you have, it's always going to be like, yes, I'm doing it for God, or no, I'm not. And if you're not doing it for God, then, then that leads to death. So our yes needs to be every time. When I talk to somebody, yes or no, am I going to be talking bad about this person? Yes or no, am I going to do this? Yes or no, am I going to pray for this person? Yeah. Every every decision that you make in your head, yeah. you know, or out loud, is a yes or no, whether you know that or not. Yeah. And so another way of giving permission is having that close relationship with God. And so I have to tell you that... I used to just read the Bible app, Bible verse of the day, and be like, yeah, I'm good. And I have to tell you that, you know, that's great, but then you're putting God in that box again. Yeah. You know, he wants that close relationship with you, you know, so you can have those times of just being together and those secrets that you share, you know, and so you really have to dig deep. And so another one is um, that goes right into this is getting in his word and not just reading it, but receiving it. Yeah. I can read the Bible all day long, but if I'm not receiving it, it's not really doing me any good. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so I hear God saying, surrender all and surrender, surrender all is all in caps. <laughs> and so what does that look like? So that means dying to yourself. And that's going to be hard for people because, you know, we live in a world that it's me, 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 me. When in reality, it's not about you. It's about Jesus because you're here to do his work. This is not your, your home forever. This is just a walk by. And then, then you have the choice of, you know, d yes, I did it. I'm going to live with Jesus in the eternal life. Or no, death. And what does that mean, you know? And so, um, dying to self, not just during baptisms, not just on Sundays, but every single day, you know? It's, it's when you wake up, and then those dying to self is like the whole day that you're up until you go to sleep. Um, so another one is surrendering it all, um, being the remnant, and the remnant is uh, what's left or a small group. Um, because if you die to yourself, you know, the world doesn't like that, you know. They might be like, oh, you're crazy, you know. And, and God says in the Bible that there's going to be a remnant. Those small, that small group of people that said yes and died to himself and didn't care about what's going on in the world. And so the next one was sanctified which is, and that was all in capitalized, um, set apart and purified. So what does dying to self mean? We're going to turn to John 12, um, 24 and 26. And so this is when um, he's predicting his death. And um, he says, Very truly I tell to you, unless a kernel of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it. While anyone who hates their life in the world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves God must follow me. And where I am, my servant, my servant also will be. My father will honor the ones who serve me. And so... Um, we have to really fully surrender it all to God, you know, 100%, not like, okay, I surrender all of this, God, besides this part of my life. He wants to look in every nook and cranny of your heart. And so, um, you 
have to fully give it to him. Um, so the second one was being a remnant. And we're going to turn to Matthew 7, 13. Um, all right. This is talking about the narrow and wide gates. Because, you know, he's telling you, yeah, the world's doing this and it seems easy. But I'm telling you to do this. You know, I, I want you to follow me and, and follow this path. I don't, I don't want you to go with the current. I want you to go against the current. So it says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many will enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only few will find it. So as I was reading over this, there's a lot in this that, it, I mean, it's a small little verse, but it has a lot of meaning to it. And so God was showing me to highlight small life and few. And he basically took this verse and kind of did what he did. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. Did what he did. And maybe it's something that somebody needs to hear and I would love to share it with you. It says, God is asking you one small favor. It said small in there. One small favor that you say yes, which in turn will give you life, but only few will follow. So, um, this should really grab somebody's attention right now because Satan wants you to go with the flow. He's going to tell you all these lies on why you why you shouldn't. Yep. He's going to twist the truth. But in reality, you need to go against the current. Yes. So our, our other one is sanctified or purified. And so in the Old Testament, they uh, sacrificed animals. Ooh, um, sacri sacrificed animals. And so, you know, that was to purify them and, and have God... Um, you know, forgive them and stay in God's presence during that time. And so when Jesus came down and died for, our died for our sins on the cross, you know, that was the perfect sacrifice in itself. So we don't have to walk miles and miles to go sacrifice. And so how do we sacrifice and be set apart? And he brought me to Romans 12. And it talks about the true and proper worship. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. And worship is not just worshiping here. That is a big part of it. But what he was truly telling me was um, your true and proper worship is obeying the Lord, yeah. not conforming yourself to this world, but but obeying and, and just surrendering it all and giving it all to Jesus. So we're going to read in, in Romans 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will that's a lot and so maybe your proper worship is maybe coming here and, and dancing freely in the, in the lord maybe that will break the barriers that you yourself have or maybe breaking the barriers is coming to pastor tim and be like Hey, like, I don't feel comfortable with this, but this is what the Lord has given me, and I'm just surrendering it all. I'm doing what God is telling me. I, I'm just, I'm giving it to God. I'm, I'm doing what he wants me to. And so when I look at some crazy Jesus lovers, I, in the Bible, um, there was three that came to mind. There's more than that. But one was John the Baptist. Um, another one was Noah. And the other one was David. And um, that was like, whoa. 
because look how much the world hated them and was like, you're crazy, you know, what are you doing? But they went against the current and look at what God did in their lives. Um, so now we're going to read in uh, Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Sorry, I know I'm getting all over the place. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will you, will, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did you, we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. This one says away, but I like the other version where it says, depart from me, you evildoers. Whoa. So God then showed me the Pharisees and the Bible. And it kind of reminded me of them, you know, because there was a, a Bible verse about woe to you teachers. You're doing this, but you're not really looking at the big picture. You're not, you're, you want to just be in such a tradition that you don't see the full picture. And what they were doing, they were so caught up in traditional church and to the laws that they had been hounded in all the time that they didn't realize who was standing right in front of them. Right there, Jesus, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, right there, and they couldn't see it. What did they do? They hated him. They wanted to kill him. So, um, so that was actually the end of, of my sermon. Uh, I was talking to Tim, and so then the next lot, the, that actually night, God woke me up and he's like, I want you to look at Nicodemus. So we're gonna look at Nicodemus, and I'm being honest, I really don't know much about him. But if God says, let's look at Nicodemus, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to turn to John 3, and we're going to do 1 through, I think, 21. And while you're turning, I want to tell you, maybe you're thinking, okay, yes, you know, ultimately Jesus does, does this. But who in the church then takes, you know, control of this? And so this man right here, I teased with him Tuesday. I'm like, it's all you, Tim. <laughs> but, but it's not. It's not him. I want you to see him. He's out of the four walls, hey. and he broke through. And I want to tell you that when he said that I love this church, I really do. And I really want to set, see people set free. And so what I seen was, he's been on fire. I've seen that. But as a pastor, you know, sometimes that flame gets a little dim. And so what I seen as I was creepishly taking pictures of him, <laughs> I, I seen him break out of his shell, like that new fresh fire. And I believe that that is that's gonna be a part of this church and breaking barriers, but it does not all fall on him or, yeah, or Christy right, or the kids. Right, right, it's right. not just him. It is the leaders in this church. Amen. And then not only the leaders in the church, right. but everyone who is a part of the church. Yes. So I was like, you know, God, like, okay. I get that, but then, you know, but then I don't, I don't see that, like, you know, I don't see people stepping out of their comfort zones. And so what needs to happen is our leaders do an amazing job, but we all, I'm a, I'm a leader, I'm an elder, or deacon, <laughs> deacon, don't. and so, you know, this falls on me as well as not pointing any fingers, you know, and that this, this is all of our jobs, but we as a church, as leaders, need to be demonstrating to the people 
what to do. We need to come down here and kneel before the Lord. We need to go out of the four walls. We need to go and talk to people. Even if we don't feel like it, we need to go do it. Amen. We need to show the other ones how to do it because that's how we're equipping so we can go out to the world. So, um, we're going to start reading in John. Um, now there was a Pharisee, a, name, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish, Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has came from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God was not with him. And so, as I read that little bit, I'm like, whoa, this Pharisee. So if you don't know about Pharisees, like, this is a big step, uncomfortable step that he had to take. And pretty much was sacrificing his life and his family's life because, you know, that wasn't what what they were supposed to do. And so they, he was sacrificing, meeting up with God, even if it was at night, that doesn't matter. He still was sacrificing his life, his family's life. And was like, I just have to ask you this question, you know? And then the second one was where he, he called him master. And I just think that's so cool because here these Pharisees are, are upset with him and hate him. And then Nicodemus is like, you, the master and so that was beautiful and so Jesus replied very truly I tell you no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again Amen. how can someone be born when they are old Nicodemus asked surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born and I'm like wait a second you're supposed to be a teacher and and, and, and you're trying to figure this out, and it kind of, like, makes me giggle a little bit because, you know, he had the Jesus shirts, he had the Jesus wristband, he had the Jesus bus. Okay, he didn't have all that, but you know what I mean. You know, he was looking the part, but he didn't really fully understand. And so um, he said, Jesus answered very, did I read that wrong? Very, uh, Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives you birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And so Nicodemus is like, how can this be? You know, like, what? And, and so um, it says, you are an Israelite teacher, says Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. Um, but still, your people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life. And so then we go into the scripture of the famous scripture that everyone wants to run to, and it's John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in, believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And God said, I do not, come here and be sent to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And I want to tell you that, you know, some people are like, well, why, why do I feel like this? Why do I feel like this when, when God is talking to me? And I'm telling you right now, he's telling you, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to set you free. But I'm telling you right now that if 
you do not come to me, if you do not repent, then that's where you will be condemned. Because it's not me. You're giving me the no. Yes. And so whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. So I'm going to stop there for a second. So when I was in Chicago, the verdict came out on June 24th. Roe versus Wade was overturned. <laughs> that was amazing. And I remember a group of girls sitting up at the table and we were like, ugh, like, this is Pride Month. The Pride Month walk is going on as we're doing the Jesus March. And now on top of that, God is like, hey, by the way, the verdict is in. Roe vs. Wade is now overturned. And so I remember, at least me, I was like a little nervous at first. And I kind of felt that with the other girls, like, eh, like, I'm not really nervous just how to go about it. You know, because we didn't want to throw it in their face and, and we wasn't doing that anyway. Um, but we kind of felt that's what it, it was going to look like. And so it was so cool. It, it was like the Holy Spirit just overwhelmed all of us yeah. at that table. Yeah. All at the same time. And it was like, yeah, we got this. Yeah. You know, right. whatever whatever happens, happens. You know, we're just going to trust in the Lord. Right. And so it's like, yes, we're going to do this. Right. And, and I have to tell you, I, I was really scared at first, you know, going in. But I was going in with, you know, heart. God's going to, you know, save me and protect me and protect the people that I love there. And so as we're going there, the cops come in, and I'm like, oh, no. Because <laughs> I just was told the story about two years ago when the cops and Sean Foyt was yeah. button heads with them. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. And so anyway, what happens is they probably get prayed more than they wanted to. And then they're like, hey, I'm not here to cause problems. I just want to make sure that you are safe. Yeah. And that was like, oh, that's a different story yeah. than what I hear and heard about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so the verdict was in, and I was so confused because so many people were quiet. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? And then I'm talking to all these other people, and they're like, you know, yeah, they're quiet or they're, Christians are being mad and they're trying to divide and all this other stuff and I'm like this is a time of rejoicing this yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. this isn't a time to throw it in their face but to be like hey I love you yes. you know and, and that Jesus loves you yeah. and so um, we're going to go back to this the verdict was in light has come into the world but people love darkness instead of the light because of their deeds were evil Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that the deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into light, light so that it may be seen plainly yeah. that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm going to, I think I'm going to start. Um, so anyway, I read that. And I'm like, cool, so what happens to Nicodemus? Does he get saved? And, and you know, I really don't know much about, about um, Nicodemus, so we can have our assumptions because it talks about then after that, um, they go to the, to the countryside um, where they're baptizing people and stuff. And so I'm like, I, I, I don't know where this leads. And so I looked into it a little more, and, you know, we can have our own thoughts about it or whatever, but what was really cool was when God showed me that, you know, here's this man that stepped out of his comfort zone, talked to Jesus, and then not only that, when Jesus died, he was one of the mans that helped prepare the body. So that was like, okay, he said yes, because he stepped out of his comfort zone. And so I'm going to... Um, just give you my heart. I've been trying to do that. And I want you to know that we need to break the barriers of traditional church. 
you need to break them completely. And all you have to do is, is not jumping through hoops. All you have to do is say yes to God and let him do the rest. And you need to fully surrender 100%. And so um, as, as we're going into this, um, I'm, I, I'm not going to be like, we're all coming up here. I'm, I'm going to trust that you listen to the Lord Amen. and whatever he Amen. tells you. Okay. And I pray that if he nudges you, yeah. even if you don't yeah. like it, to go with it. Yeah. Um, to step out of that uh, out of that comfort zone yeah. and go out on that limb for God. Yeah. And, and right now, I um, as we were singing, I really felt like, you know, Satan was shaking in his boots. Because, hey. because what's going to happen is Connection Church is going to be set free. And he's afraid. Hey. He's afraid of the people who are going to take that tape off their mouth and really bolt yeah. it out there. Come on. And so um, I just pray right now. Let's go into prayer that, uh, dear Heavenly Father, that you just be with us, protect us, and guide us. And I just ask you to open the hearts and I pray that they receive Lord if it's not through the message I don't care wherever it wherever um, God laid it on them whether it was the worship whether it was somebody talking to them Lord God I just pray that they really received what God had for them today and so Satan I rebuke you I rebuke you in the name of Jesus you have a right to be afraid because Connection Church is tired of being in chains they're tired of being in the bear and I pray right now that the chains, the barriers will be bro broken, Lord God, that you are a God who has all the might, that has all the power, Lord God. And I'm telling you right now, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like, God, here I am. I'm set free, and I have a feeling that there's people going to be today that say, I want that, I want that, I want that, Jesus, 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 I want you, you deserve it, and so I just pray that you really are, um, you're really listening to the Spirit today, the Holy Spirit, and you just let Him lead you, and, and today, if, if that has to be a holy push, up here, Lord God, I pray that you do it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Thank you for your words, your wisdom.